Okay, here we have Betrayal House on the Hill, 3rd edition. And just full disclosure, I did receive this as a giveaway or gift or promo item at Gen Con 2023 from the cool folks at Avalon Hill. So, I did get the game for free. And I did get them to sign uh, the game, even though they didn't actually create it. This is just, these were just Avalon Hill employees that were there at the convention, not uh, Bruce Glasgow. So we take off the lid and we've got the tiles, tile sheet. It's pretty similar to the Hero Quest remake 2021 in the back. I've never played this game before. There's a companion app, free companion app for it. It looks like mostly it just keeps track of the turns and the uh, character sheets. Otherwise it just tells you to refer to the book. You know, similar to Hero Quest, where you're expected to have the book. I mean, uh, yeah, the, you're supposed to have the physical game to go with it. It's just a supplement, it's just a guide. It's not the whole game in uh, format. So I think this game's typically, it's like 56 bucks. So it looks like you've got a bunch of room tiles. Oh, here's your characters. These poor dopes that are gonna go into the horror movie scenarios. So, all double-sided tiles. These look like variants on the same character. They've just got like different facial expressions, or like glasses or no glasses. So you can have six players. There's like hauntings and monsters and all kinds of goings on. Wow, there's a lot of tiles in here. This looks like some assembly required. Bloody room. See, lots of tiles. Okay, and here's the book, and there's a bunch of scenarios. So it's shiny, glossy. So we got that there. Rule book, okay. Do not read until the haunt scenario begins. So, to Trader's Tome. Okay, got that. Secrets of Survival, do not read until the haunt scenario. Okay, so there's spoilers in, within. This is a I think these are, okay, these are the special dice and the marker tokens. Oh yeah, these are the miniatures. It's bendy gray plastic. You've got these little rubber boots on them that you can remove. So, looks like the same scale as Hero Quest. So there's six little characters here. And there's a bunch of these tall cards. I'm recognizing the same quality as the 2021 Hero Quest remake. And then we got the candy tray. And that's it. So we'll have to try this game out. It says age 12 and up. So sounds like it's going to be pretty complicated, probably. It's on the Hill 3rd Edition, which I always call Betrayal at Hill House, but they're probably going for that vibe. There's many uh, remakes and modifications of this. Game. There's like a Scooby-Doo one, there's like a Krampus one, there's uh, Baldur's Gates and Dungeons and Dragons. But yeah, these are the little clips that you put on uh, these character things to like show like, okay, where are they in terms of like damage or mind points or whatever. I, I have to learn all the stats and so we got all these cards. And the dice are, so they got two blank faces, these are plastic, it's kind of a two twos, two ones, and two blank faces. And there's three of them. Or no, <laughs> just kidding. There's quite a few more dice, four, five, six, seven. There's eight dice, eight of these. All right, so I did get a chance to play Betrayal at House on the Hill, third edition. Uh, with some family members. So we played a three-player game. This is my first time, well, it was the first time for any of us playing a game of this type. And it was pretty fun. I think the estimate of a 90-minute game was about right. I think it took us two hours, but I mean, we took a couple breaks in between. So it took about a, that amount of time. I took the advice of the rule book and I actually read through the rule book the first time. I didn't peek at the haunts or scenarios. But I had a fairly good sense of how the game was going to go through from that one read-through. Now, as 
I later found out looking at the board game geek forums for this game. Um, when we got to the part about the haunt, it's, you know, it's as if you're playing another game entirely. I mean, you start out exploring the house and then you do the haunt. So to me, it felt like, okay, now we had to go over the rules. So we, we had to re read over the rules together. At that point, there were a lot of questions. Um, the scenario we played, you know, without spoiling too much, it was uh, haunt number 42. So I had a couple of questions. I think our questions were like, well, are you, it says to get out a certain type of tile, but are you supposed to get more than one? Turns out, yes. Then it was a question of how to read the, the numbers because they'll give you like a number slash number slash number slash number. That's what that refers to is three, four, five, six, because you can't play the game with less than three players. You have to have at least three. So when they give you a number, it's like a three player game will have this many four player, five player, six player. So that's how it works. I also checked out the companion app, the free companion app called the betrayal official app that they have for this game. And it's totally different than the hero quest app. Like I kind of expected it would automate the game somehow, but really all it does, I mean, yes, it plays spooky music and has spooky sound effects, but all it does is it keeps track of your character tile information, which in this box, I mean, you've already got uh, one of those, you know, these, these tiles that show you like all your attributes. So you're supposed to manually plug that in. So it's like, having a phone that's your character sheet instead of using the cardboard so i guess you could do that the dice rolls aren't part of it i mean it keeps track of what um cards you're supposed to draw and collect and they recently added the uh, blood on the moon werewolf expansion which only i guess only has one scenario so the app doesn't really do as much as i thought it would but i mean it's it's free there's no ads and I can run it in an emulator using blue stacks, but having three people at the table, each with their phone and phones out, I mean, I guess is another way to play, but it's not required. And I mean, you could find some spooky music on YouTube and play it, you know, get some Carl Casey on there, <laughs> white bat audio just to plug him again. Uh, but yeah, so this is an Avalon Hill game and I guess, when I was looking online, most of the confusion that people had, and they even address it in the rule book, so I tried not to read too much of it, but people were confused because the original edition had one set of rules, the second edition had changed rules, and then this third edition has changed the rules even more. So they were trying to account for, like, well, you used to play the game this way, now you play it this way. I guess you could steal items from each other in the old versions. So, I mean, it's kind of interesting to hear about that and hear people trying to convert like old scenarios to this new game or figuring out ways to adapt the rules so that you can play that way. It looks like you could write your own scenario pretty easily, but a lot of the game feels very, very random. It feels like you're just wandering around through a house that you're creating with these tiles. And I was thinking, okay, I hope you have a big tabletop because it could go in any direction. But I think even if you laid out all the tiles, I think you're probably gonna have like what, 18 tiles typically and the odds of you rolling to trigger the haunt just keep increasing and keep increasing until eventually, like, it's bound to happen at some point or another. And then you just do that scenario. And sometimes it's just, like, the, the, the particular one we did was over very quickly. It was like the traitor, who I was, I turned out to be the traitor, and, of course, I embraced the role with gusto. It's like, oh, yeah, just like in a horror movie, you know, your character turns evil or whatever. He gets taken over by the forces evil powers or whatever and so it starts attacking one of the other players and so while that fight is going on which it kind of reminded me of space crusade because when you attack someone you can be hurt yourself because it's based on you know who gets the highest dice roll and you're using those special dice that have uh ones and twos like two ones and two twos and then two blanks so if you could you could attack someone but they get a higher roll than you and you're going to take damage so while that fight was happening, the other player was actually in one of the rooms. Like there were two rooms that she was supposed to go to to accomplish a certain objective, like do an action in each one. And of course, again, it's based on dice rolls, so it's based on luck. Um, that player was already in one of the rooms. So it was like, boom, get that done. Next turn, go to the next room, do it. Now, if she'd gotten bad dice rolls, I might have gotten a lucky dice roll and killed that player. But then still, 
like I was really far away in the house. So there's no way the trader would have won probably. But the question is, you know, would they, would it be a, a total victory or would it be like a, you know, a, a war of attrition? Because one side to win just has to accomplish objectives. The bad guys to win, I think, just have to kill the other players. But that was just the one haunt. I guess there's 50 of them. So once you get through all of them, I mean, I'm not sure the replay value after that. But it, it was a fun game. I enjoyed myself. And the fact that it plays on like horror movies, suspense movies, a lot of them I've seen, even the really cheesy, terrible ones, uh, is a draw for the game. So I could see people enjoying this type of game. Like a uh, Halloween get together, you know, play kind of a spooky game that kind of reminds you of, of other things. And it doesn't take a super long amount of time. Now, the miniatures, I guess they want you to paint them. They're gray. They're exactly the same shape, size, and scale as the Hero Quest remake figures, except they're all in gray. And they have these little rubber boots at the bottom, which I showed you, that are removable and made of like bendy plastic or rubbery plastic, these little boots, whatever you want to call them, covers, rims, which remind me of Ribby's Remarkable Rims that he kindly 3D printed for me. But anyway, these are compatible with HeroQuest, so you could take these and actually use them to differentiate like a different heroes like mercenaries. I mean, only one of each. Now, if you were thinking of doing that strategy, this game is $56. I got it free from Avalon Hill as a parting gift, <laughs> door prize, whatever, from uh, the Avalon Hill guys, which is really cool. So, of course... That's, you know, I have to put the paid promotion checkbox for YouTube since I got this for free. Um, but you could use these in HeroQuest if you wanted. Probably not HeroScape because the bases are a different size. Um, if you got the expansion Blood on the Moon, which I don't know if I would get that. It's just, it doesn't seem like it adds much to the game. I mean, unless it was really, really cheap. But it hasn't been out that long, so I don't think it's, it's probably fairly expensive still. If you can find a deal. I mean, that has two more characters. A werewolf and a, another hero, because that hero turns into a werewolf back and forth. Spoilers, or not so spoilers. But that one only has two two figures, and so two of these boots. I think one is white and one of them is black, or dark gray. Then they have a Christmas-themed one, or Krampus-themed one, which kind of looks fun. And I think those two expansions each come with comic books that tell you like the storyline. And I think once again, it has two characters. It has like a Krampus type character. And I think is it, it's like an evil elf or like a Santa monster or something. It's something weird like that. But I think it has gold and silver boots. But you can check those out to, to tell me if I'm right or wrong on that. But anyway, for my first exposure to this game, I probably would never have bought it on my own because I just thought, ah, this doesn't look like something that really appeals to me. This just looks like some you know normie game some mainstream game and i mean they call it a light rpg i don't know about that i mean the characters have little storylines you could ham it up playing the game but you don't have to i mean you, you've got uh those six well there's actually 12 characters you could choose from because you can flip the tile over and so there's a different version so like one of the characters he's a priest but you can flip it on the other side and there's a guy that kind of looks like it could be his twin brother but he's a doctor um, you've got the little kid with glasses, and then his hair is a little different. He doesn't have glasses, and he has a different personality, different age. So, like, oh, okay, it could be this family resemblance. Um, but the miniature kind of looks like a cross between the two characters. So depending on how you paint it, if you decide to paint it. I mean, if you don't, you just use the colored boots to differentiate the characters. So I could see people enjoying this. But, I mean, when I was when I was doing my unboxing, I was I kept saying it's just like Hero Quest. It's just like the Hero Quest remake. When I'm saying that, I'm talking about the build quality like the figures are made out of the same bendy plastic they have their round bases the hollow round bases these uh tiles have a certain thickness to them and a certain like light linen finish not like a linen air like a playing card finish so avalon hill with the newer hero quest releases so rise of the dread moon and mage of the mirror they have like a really deep linen finish on the box and on the cards this is more like the lighter linen finish that was used in the HeroQuest remake 2021, like the Mythic tier and the Heroic tier and Frozen Horror, that sort of thing. Same thing with the tiles. And these cards are an odd shape. So if you were trying to sleeve these cards, it'd be kind of weird. You are supposed to shuffle them quite a bit. These dice are unique. They're kind of like an ivory color. 
Um, and then you've got these big like magazine style booklets, which have thread stitching to them. So I mean, it's fairly high quality as far as the way it's put together. I mean, you can already see though, uh, on these, like the, you know, the, the corners get dinged up just from normal use. And I mean, if you open this box a lot and like push it down forcefully, I mean, it's going to start ripping the sides. I mean, it's not as thick and tall as the, you know, the old HeroQuest retail box, which they thankfully redesigned thanks to Adam Glick of Adam, Adam Glick of Avalon Hill. <laughs> Couldn't say his name, but yeah, he redesigned the, the box. And, you know, talking about those Avalon Hill boxes, so like Made to the Mirror, the all the figures are in there really light and they're easy to remove, except for the ogres. The ogres are like really snap in there tight. Now I started bagging these up. Um, I would say that the, the figures for this set are they're in there pretty pretty uh, tight, but I mean I didn't feel the need to do the boiling water trick on these because I mean you just kind of like you can just kind of bend it with your finger if you really want to and it looks fine. It's just a character holding a lantern or a flashlight. But look at all these tiles. When I saw this, I thought, this game is ridiculous. This is going to be so complicated. Look at all these things. It takes like a half hour just to punch them all out. But really, you don't need most of these. Like when you play, you only need like a small handful of tiles. And that's because each haunt calls for its own special tiles. So I could see if people were going to try to make their own adventures, like that's what they would do. I like how the box is designed though. It does provide places to put almost everything. Like you can put these here, these here, these here. Of course, look at these tiles. I mean, I put them in this little cubby, but they just obviously bounced out when I was manipulating the box for this video. So I think if you get, I mean, I just use Ziploc bags, but if you get those little bitty like collector bags or like jewelry bags, those little uh, small like snap I don't know what you call them. They're not Ziploc bags, but I mean, it's like a tiny version of this. You could put just, just those tiles for that one scenario and just maybe even label them. So like scenario 44, here they are haunting number 44, or 35 or 15 or whatever, and you just do them all. They also give you a lot of extra of these, um, these little, little daggers, whatever you want to call them. These, these little, these little plastic things. These are the like little counters. When you're putting these on the character tiles, these pentagons, you want to just like kind of get your fingernail under there and just kind of like gently lift to separate them to clip it on because otherwise you're going to like ding it up and rip like little bits on the card, which I, I did that to one. And I think one of the tiles ripped in the corner, one of the rune tiles ripped in the corner when I was punching it out. And I was going to actually fix that here at home with my uh, glue stick because I was traveling. But anyway, yeah, this little trick of like gently separating the plastic to clip it on rather than pushing it on is what I learned from Space Crusade and the doors because that's how the doors worked. So, but anyway, um, one of the things I was reading reviews of the older versions of Betrayal at House on the Hill, which I keep calling Betrayal at Hill House, but that's the name of a horror movie, Hill House, Haunting at Hill House. Um, yeah, a lot of the reviews were saying that the uh, second edition had like some problems with the build quality, like it wasn't very good, like there were some components that would break or were flimsy, or like the, the little clips would just like move too freely, and so uh, this is like an improvement. So they listened to feedback in making this edition to try to improve it. So, and I mean the companion app is a, is a cool idea, but it's it's definitely not as advanced as the HeroQuest companion app where the point was to actually take the place of the, the GM player. I mean, there's no GM in this game. Everything's just random. And the players are on the same team until they're not. <laughs> I guess it's possible to have some scenarios where there's no trader, where it's just everybody's on the same team. But basically it's like, okay, you complete this task and you know, then the other person tries to stop you, tries to kill you. But apparently discovering who the traitor is, it's not like Among Us. Like, I've never played the video game Among Us. But from what I hear of that game, uh, that one, the whole point is to find out who the traitor is and, like, vote them off the island or kill them or whatever. In this one, doesn't matter. You know right away who the traitor is. 
And it's usually the person who discovers what the haunt is. And you discover what the haunt is just by rolling fives after you draw an omen card. And you draw an omen card when you land on a tile that tells you to draw an omen card. Now, the only thing that we were kind of wondering about that wasn't really clarified anywhere was if you wanted to get another card on your turn, could you just like move to the adjoining room and then move back to get the card, the same card again or to draw from the same pile again? Then you wonder, well, why would you ever do that? Well, maybe you would do that because you just want to get the haunting over with. Like you don't want to take extra time. Why would you explore though? Well, you would explore to try to get more items because you might be getting weapons that could help you. So I could see the advantage in not doing that. And maybe that's why people weren't asking why they couldn't do it because they wouldn't want to. They want to delay the haunting as long as possible so they can get more and better items. Now, if you stick together, that means if someone's revealed as the traitor, the fight's going to start right away. There they are. But if you need to help each other out, at least you're on a level playing field. So I could see different strategies coming into play and not it not being a totally random game. Because I know that there were some people saying, well, it's not a it's not a game. It's just it's just randomness. It's just a, a random story, like a choose your own adventure. I mean there's some skill involved in choose your own adventures, of course they can lie to you, not necessarily follow the rules of logic of the real world. But anyway, it was a cool introduction to a game, and again, thanks to Avalon Hill, I pro like I said, I probably never would have even tried this game before if uh, they hadn't just given me a copy. I mean, they tried hard. I mean, <laughs> you'll hear it in the interviews. They say, oh yeah, Betrayal, Betrayal. Like, they mentioned that game a lot, as if they were trying to get me to, to try it or trying to promote it at the same time because we were talking about HeroQuest so much. But I think it was it was worthwhile. So continuing my coverage of Betrayal at House on the Hill 3rd Edition. I hope I don't get audio jungled by this. I'm just running uh, Bluestacks 5 emulator here, so see glitches. This is not official. This is just uh, how I see it because I don't have a smartphone. I'm running the official companion app, so this would be like the Android version. Those big white boxes, I can't do anything about that. That's just because it, it doesn't let me run in landscape mode. click through so it's got spooky music this is what it looks like so you can this is uh, version 180 uh, either 181 or 185 okay. just so I don't get audio jungle let me turn the music down okay choice of languages so yeah not a lot of choices again it's it's basically just like a virtual character sheet so, I mean if you have six people at your table each one has got a phone and a tablet and they're just looking at this, staring at this instead of those uh, tiles so you still need the physical board game to actually play it so you can do the werewolf's journey blood on the moon I forget what the uh, Christmas one is called, but I'm sure they'll be adding that shortly after it's released this year. But anyway, so let's say we were going to do this. So you've got your different scenarios. I mean, they're physical cards that show these, the same info. Like, this is the one that we did. So spoilers possibly there. And so, like, I picked this guy. Character, so you can look at his preview. He's got sound effects that it's playing. You can hear the clicking. Yeah, so I, I pick him. So there's my guy. So it's like there's nothing more to do. So all the other players are going doing the same exact thing. So I can, as you go through the game, okay, let's say I found that. And it makes a little sound effect for it. What else did I find? Um, I think that was all. I had for items and then omens. So you get too many of these, it triggers the haunting. So I had that, I had that, and I had the dog. So to begin the haunt, so let's see, oh, event cards. House is hungry, I think it was. 
Wait a minute. You get haunt, oh, haunt roll. Okay, yeah, this is what I had, so I had to bug. So, spoilers, if you don't want to see the spoilers, stop the, stop the video. But I think it just tells you to turn to the book page. Okay, I am the traitor in this case. Okay, yeah, it just says go to page 51. Okay, so you don't have to stop the video. Okay, but it tells you this is what you need. It says search token. You actually need one for each of the rooms. So you could have, I think, as few as two, or you put one down, and the, the next one you would put down, then that side wins. But if there's six players, you're going to have six or five tokens, and then the sixth one you don't have to put down because you win. Just like in Street Fighter when, you know, you, you don't have to count the third round because you've already run won two rounds, you've won. So anyway, that's how that goes. We were confused at first about the food tokens, but we just had to kind of reread it and it explained how they actually get used in the book. And you got the trader has his book, and then everybody else has their book. The heroes have their survival book. And you can actually read that section to each other out loud. It's only the victory thing, the victory um, conditions that you're supposed to keep secret. But since we were playing our first game, you know, our practice game, we just read it to each other. It's like, oh yeah, we win if we search, if we exercise the spirits from these two rooms, and you win if you kill us. You know, so it's like, okay. So anyway, I guess that's the spoiler. But it's still, it's still pretty fun. And I guess that what I've heard from previous versions, um, what this edition adds is just more story, more flavor text to the proceedings to make it more theatrical, more cinematic, if you will. So he's a traitor. The traits have been reset to their default values. Bury the dog. Okay, so I guess there are some spoilers here, so I should have warned you some more. Um, he's good at running. See, so there's where it says your turn actions. But again, it's the, the still the vast majority is done on the board. Rolling the dice, drawing the cards. This is just your character sheet, so I mean, you can change these values. Honor system, you know, if you get to that, you're dead. So it changes it. Green is where you start at. It's actually not a very difficult game when you think about it. Just it, it was intimidating at first because I saw so many tokens, and it's like, oh, it's one of these role-playing light games where you got to put down the tiles. The role-playing, I mean, it doesn't have to come in the game at all, really. Yeah, we get these sound effects to startle you. Like, ah! And you can, you can turn them off if you don't like them. You can turn off the music. So that's it. I mean, there's no, like, end the game. It's just exit to title. That's it. So not a lot to it. I mean, I'm glad it exists. It's, it's just kind of a nice thing. It's not required. But the fact that you have it and it's not deluging, with, deluging you with ads is good. I think it does collect your user statistics, anonymous data statistics, so if you don't like that on your smartphone, then you probably shouldn't use it. Uh, and it only works officially on Android and iOS. I mean, I'm using an emulator, but if you have a, a modern PC, it shouldn't be a problem to run it. And whether you link it to the internet or not is your business. Of course, you have to do it at least initially in order to download the program which I think means you have to have a Google account. So some people in other countries, like with these apps, have complained saying that you know it, it doesn't work because they have to get like a Google account in the US or something. So I'm like, okay, so you have to use a VPN not only to download it, but a VPN to create the Google account in the first place. I don't know. They, they put up a lot of barriers in some territories just to get the little app, and I think that's annoying. But anyway, I don't have this expansion, but if I were to do it, Okay, there's just the one scenario. Uh, okay, so this is the new character. Here she is. So she's got her stats. Okay. Jungle. Okay. Here she is. Um, choose that character, and then she will. Yeah, Howl at the Moon. She will turn into a werewolf at various points. I don't know all the details there, so I'm just looking to see, is there anything new here? Keith. I'm not sure the expansion adds that much. I mean, it's one character. 
two figures. Game haunt, so haunt roll. Or you do the event card. House is hungry. So this is, yeah, haunt trigger event card. Okay, so it could be triggered by an event card. Free for all. Contest between all players. The trader's tome book is used by all players. Okay, so we didn't play that way. We just played the normal, the normal way. So go to page 11. The trader's tome. Follow the instructions. Do troll hands. So we're just playing the same adventure, just a different role and different characters. Oh, she turned into a werewolf. Okay, so she died. She gets more damage as it goes. She get anything? She's more powerful? No. Same way. Yeah, if any of your stats go down to the skull, you're dead. Although you can't die before the haunt begins, but as soon as the haunt begins, if you're in that skull territory, you just automatically die. Uh, but that didn't happen to any of our players. So, I guess that's it. Uh, that is the companion app for Betrayal at House on the Hill, uh, 3rd edition. So, I don't think I would really use this. I mean, I guess it'd be kind of fun to hear the music, but, you know, you're just running down your phone battery while you're playing for 90 minutes or whatever. I'm not sure if the... I guess having more players, I'm thinking, would it take longer? Possibly. But, I mean, you're, when you do your turn, all you're doing is you're moving. You have predefined movement until the haunt begins. And once the haunt begins, then it's a frantic race to, like, try to get your objective done and you're actually rolling dice a lot. Now, you draw a card, usually it's like, roll the dice. And you roll the dice to see either if you lost a stat, stayed the same, or gained a stat in some cases. And when you draw the omen card, it's like, Okay, you got to roll haunt roll to see if did you trigger the haunt by getting a five or more, or nothing happened. And it's usually just like you know, you you walk into a room, you see something strange, or some ghost like talks to you or attacks you, and then you just move on. But eventually the haunt gets triggered. Then it's like, okay, here's the traitor, or there's no traitor, and there's some goal that has to be completed. Which team, traitor or everybody else? has to try to complete the goal, whoever does that wins. And sometimes there's some text, like victory text when the traitor wins, but there isn't victory text when the good guys win, the heroes, or vice versa. So some people were questioning whether that was incomplete, or are you just supposed to ad lib it, or, or what? <laughs> but anyway, it seems like a fun game. Uh, I'd like to play more of it. I am curious to see, you know, kind of some of the other scenarios. Some of the reviews people were posting online, they were saying... Like, Widow's Walk was the first expansion to the original game. They said, oh, some of those scenarios weren't very good. They were just silly. They weren't scary at all. So I don't know. But it's it's supposed to be age 12 and up. Uh, and is that because of the complexity, or is that because of thematic elements? I mean, there's murder and mayhem. I guess it's not that much more intense than Clue, except that the murders are ongoing, as opposed to, well, the murder just happened. I mean, in Clue, you're talking about, you know, murder weapons and all this stuff. But nobody's actively trying to kill you, whereas in this one, you're, you're expected to take on the role of the traitor. And it even says in the book, well, if you don't want to, like you don't feel like you can do it, uh, someone else will be the traitor instead. So yeah, random sound effects to try to scare you. Audio jungle. All right, so let's uh, the title screen, and thanks for watching. Okay. Thanks. And thanks to Avalon Hill for providing a free review copy. And let me keep that in for autographing it for, the, for posterity. Thanks.